This is the house where I lived with my two brothers and parents when I was about eight or nine years old. It was a new house, but there were many very old houses on the street with mature trees everywhere. The back of the house overlooked the beautiful Siwanoi golf course in which there were many different kinds of trees. My grandfather had built a fireplace against the cyclone fence bordering the golf course. I had learned how to climb up the fireplace, get over the barbed wire, and scale the fence. This was the remote end of the golf course, furthest from the clubhouse. In the evenings, after the golfers had left, it was my arboretum. I loved the trees. Oh, and this is what I looked like back then. Actually, I almost never looked like that, with combed hair and a jacket. This picture is much more characteristic. What I didn't appreciate until I was in my 40s is that at that time, I knew all the trees in my neighborhood. No, I didn't know their names. No one taught me the words maple or elm, but I knew them in a personal way, the way other kids knew one another. And I wasn't aware of it. I simply thought that everyone knew the trees. I found out much later in my life that other kids didn't have the same relationship to trees that I had. The realization was the result of a flashback that I had in my 40s to an episode that happened during this period when I was about 10. One of my little classmates, Sue, had invited me over to her house after school to see her new chalkboard. It was one of those kids' boards framed in wood and held in the middle of each side by an axle so that it could pivot to the other side. I'd searched the internet to find a picture, but no one seems to sell them anymore. The closest I could get was this, which looks similar but is much larger than Sue's little board. She asked me to draw something. I asked her what she wanted me to draw. She said, whatever you like. I told her I would draw a tree, and I asked her which tree she would like me to draw. The only reason I can remember asking her which tree she wanted me to draw after so many years have passed is the expression of incomprehension on her face that followed my question. She shrugged. So I drew one of the elm trees lining the third tee of the Siwanoi golf course. These trees were just to the right of the fireplace. I could see them from my bedroom window. I remember drawing it without leaves, just the structure of the tree. If you've never seen a mature elm tree, here's a picture of one I took from the internet. Mine was a more narrow tree because it grew between two other trees. Funny how I can still picture the tree, but I can't picture what Sue looked like. Here's where my mother comes into the story. That night, my mother asked me a question in a stern voice that went something like this. Richard, did you draw a tree on Sue's new blackboard? Beginning the sentence with my name was the tip-off. I was in trouble. I went into preemptive whining. Mom, she can wipe it off. It's a blackboard. It's just chalk. My mother continued the conversation with Sue's mother, and I heard no more about it. I was left wondering if they didn't know that chalk could be erased. After I had this flashback in my 40s, I brought it up with my mother at the very next visit. Fortunately, she remembered the incident. She laughed at the thought. Ah, she said, it was nothing. Sue's parents were out when you went over to her house, and they were worried that some adult had been in the house alone with Sue because they couldn't imagine a child drawing a tree that looked so realistic. An adult receiving that kind of feedback would think he had some special interest or talent in art, but I didn't. For one thing, I believed that everyone could draw trees if they felt like it. After all, you just draw what you see in your mind. It's not as if you have to make something up. I also didn't believe that I was unusually familiar with trees. I thought that everyone knew the trees. That's why I had asked Sue which tree she wanted me to draw. I wanted to know which of the trees in our neighborhood she wanted me to draw. Apparently, my mother did think I had artistic talent, and she also thought I was a wonderful boy. She sent me to an art class. I remember my first and last art class clearly. 
The teacher went around the room tossing a lump of clay on each desk and asked us to roll it into a ball. Then she asked us to make a fist and pound it in the center. I did it, but I had no idea why. Now take one finger and press it down on the edges, on one side, then the other side, and then one in between. Then she announced that we had all made ashtrays. I found this profoundly depressing. I didn't feel I had made anything. She had created a classroom full of ashtrays, and all we did was roll, punch, and press. By the way, these pictures are a pretty accurate replication of the clay ashtray that I made. I owe thanks for these pictures to my dear friend Linda Wright, a potter in Cape Breton. I have to laugh whenever I think about such an accomplished potter making this silly ashtray based on my description just so that I could use it in my video. Thanks, Linda. Anyway, I never took another art class, but I did keep painting, mostly trees and flowers, even as I went to graduate school and became a psychologist. Eventually, friends began to inquire as to whether my art was for sale. I was so flattered that at first I gave them away. Later, I charged a small amount. Then my work ended up in a gallery in Los Angeles, then Toronto and Miami, so gradually, I began to believe that my paintings were communicating something to others. But I didn't have a clear aim as an artist. At the same time, just as I was growing more aware of myself as an artist, I also was becoming more aware of my special interest in the trees. Occasionally, I would ask other people whether they knew the trees in their neighborhoods. Most of them just laughed. So I gradually began to understand that I do have a special relationship to plants. Not everyone talks about trees in personal language, as if they were friends. Eventually, I came to realize that what I was trying to do in my paintings was to express my special relationship to plants, to communicate to others something that gave me a great deal of pleasure. So today, when I'm asked about my aim or purpose in painting, I'm more certain that I actually do have a purpose. Put simply, I want to introduce others to my plant friends through art, to share my relationship with plants. Now, whenever I hear myself talk about having a relationship with plants, I get a pain in my left hemisphere because of my other life as a psychologist. My psychologist side warns me that relationship implies to two persons, each of whom has expectations of the other. Now, I do have certain expectations about plants, but I know that they don't have expectations of me. In another video, I'm going to use examples from my paintings to illustrate specifically what I'm talking about and how I get around this limitation of plants not having expectations of me.